this is Rinculelio Tatlia Sunya Green, just in case you didn't read the title. <laughs> oh, the reason I am opening this video like this is because I have to just share her with you in a little bit more detail, seeing as so far we don't have a care collab on her. But let me tell you that Orchid Ninja Tropical Plants Finland has Sunya Green as well. She managed to bloom hers a couple of months ago. I will link her video in the description if you want to go and have a look. From here on in, this orchid goes into the Care Collab database, not because I actually bloomed her out, but because there is another channel, Tropical Plants Finland, that actually has one and it has bloomed as well. So that is why I'm bringing her to your attention as well, not just because I am blown away, which is a big reason. I am totally blown away by this bloom, but also in case you want to see the Sunya Green in Finland, well, again, Link in the descriptions. Let me share this gorgeous orchid with you. First of all, she got divided. One piece went to the UK, to the orchid room to be specific. If you ever see this video, hi Ariel, miss you tons. And that was the front piece. I kept the nasty looking back piece that had a suitable, that was just chopped off when it arrived. Somebody thought, well, maybe that leaf doesn't look nice and just took a cut, which, you know, let me be the decision maker, seeing as I'm going to be growing this orchid, but hey ho. So I kept the back piece that looked a little bit ratty. I really hope that the orchid room has had the opportunity to experience this gorgeous bloom. So this is the back piece. And it grew a growth after the division. And then this next growth that is blooming now is the one that gets me to finally enjoy a Sunya green bloom. I have another one that is a named one called Mailman. I've had that one also for three and a half years, close to four. And three years in a row, I experienced bud blast. So I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? I am in southern Spain. Rinculelia cattleya, come on, it's a hybrid. It can't be that difficult to bloom. Now, the fact that the one that is now blooming didn't bloom or attempt to bloom before is because I chopped half of it off. So, you know, give it a break. I fully understand it needs a year to recover. And here we are with a bloom. And this bloom really had to hold on throughout the worst weeks of the year. It started to show at the beginning of January. And you know, my heart just sank. I just thought, okay, here we go. I'm gonna experience more bud blast on this orchid. But at least I got this division to the point that it wants to bloom. So that for me was a great sign, you know, silver lining and all that. But this one actually held on and I cannot be more grateful. And yes, I'm putting her in the spotlight for that reason, because I'm really hoping that maybe we get to see the mailman now. The reason I bought two is not not just because I like green blooms, I heard about the fragrance, but I also wanted to own a named variety because I wanted to compare the blooms. Is there a difference? What made one get named as opposed to this one just being a standard Sunya green? So that's the reason I have two. But let me tell you something, this bloom, it has now lasted close to three weeks and it doesn't show me any signs of decline. If there is a little bit of brown at the edges, that would probably be mechanical damage. But because I didn't know how long this bloom would last, I already filmed the clip for the Blooms For You series, and I already have dedicated this bloom. But that video probably hasn't even come out yet. So it's really nice to know how long this bloom is lasting. Oh, but let me tell you, not just because she's so beautiful, the fragrance. The fragrance is so intense. I'm approximately two and a half, maybe three meters away from her when I work at my desk. And I can't tell you, if you like a mojito, but without the mint, that fresh citrus fragrance that really gives a sort of a sparkle in your nose because of whatever soda that you put in. I prefer Sprite, but that sugary, lemony hit that you get, excluding the mint, that is the fragrance of this orchid and it comes whether the sun is shining or not. And it will last straight through late afternoon and into early evening. It's just divine. I cannot say much more about it. Apart from me, as I mentioned, being a sucker for green blooms. Now, the bloom itself on the viewfinder looks a little bit more yellow in the lip. Consider it a little bit more on the chartreuse side of green. And also the petals here, they sort of look a little bit more yellow. 
but the two of them are matching in chartreuse green. I'm going to insert, of course, some stills so that you can appreciate the real and true color and the detail of the lip. This bloom just speaks to me in every single way with one exception. Maybe it's a first time bloom thing. I don't know. I may have to go back and check out Tropical Plant Finland's video to see if hers opened flat. You can see that mine has a little bit of a closed shape, not only by the images, maybe I can demonstrate that here. You see how the white facade is reflecting on the lip. <laughs> but look at that. You see how closed she is. The sepals are not opening upright and opening the bloom up. So she has a little bit more of like a claw shape. Not that I mind. I am not complaining. This is just something that I've observed in the last two weeks, three weeks that I've wondered, is she going to open up properly? Is she supposed to open up properly? I have her in Lekka and self watering, like I have about 80% of my collection. And she is a vigorous, vigorous grower to my understanding. Now that I've got one piece to bloom, I would now actually consider the Sunya Green a reliable bloomer, simply because of what she endured while she was forming the bud and it did not blast. What I'm gonna say about the mailman throughout the coming season, we'll just have to wait and see what the mailman does. Currently, I don't even see a sign of new growth on the mailman. Oh, but the fragrance is hitting me hard. Anyway, I have been fertilizing this orchid the moment I saw that she was pushing a bud. I've kept up the momentum of 300 parts per million, which is what she's gotten even while she is in bloom. I'm thinking that the stressful conditions might just help her along if I give her a little bit more fertilizer. And the media on the top is staying clean. So, yep, hungry orchid. Big bloom, lots of fertilizer. And of course, I've been flushing on a regular basis as well because I don't want any salt buildup in my pot. So pretty much I've gone against the grain this winter with this one simply because I did not want to lose that bud. If that was the recipe to getting her to bloom, I won't know unless I do something different the next time. But for the time being, having just continued with 300 parts per million, a little bit more regular flushing just to avoid salt buildup, this is the result. And I'm doing mental cartwheels around my patio. <laughs> I encourage you to go and check out Orchid Ninja Tropical Plants Finland video. Again, in the description, compare the blooms. She also grows in organic media. So if that is something of interest to you, the organic form of growing, there is another option. And well, all I can say now is if you have this orchid and you do videos and you post on social media and you want to join the list on the Care Collab database, please let me know in the comments and I will be very happy to go from there and get you on board and welcome you to the Care Collab crew. I hope that you enjoyed seeing a beautiful perfumed bloom in the viewfinder. Scratch and sniff and then think mojito without the mint and you are engulfed in that gorgeous sugary citrusy fragrance until late evening. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for indulging me and spending time with me while I gush about this gorgeous orchid. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. I will attach a condition to that, though, that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.